round two from the New York Giants and the Washington Commanders. And I expect both sides to come out a little bit more prepared for this one and for the score to be just a bit higher. How we'll get there coming up next on today's episode of Locked on Commanders. You are Locked on Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome in, everybody, to today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, David Harrison, covering the Washington Commanders for Sports Illustrated's CommanderGameDay.com. Also kicking in over at WUSA9.com's coverage of the team this year. And I'm here with you every Monday through Friday. Thank you for coming through for today's episode. If you're new to the show, welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy. Hope you stick around a little bit. Every day is. Of course, you've been around for a little while, and I appreciate you for being an everydayer coming through every single day. Locked On Commanders is your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders. And if you haven't already, please go ahead, take a moment to subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you are listening to today's episode, which is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create your account, use the code Locked On NFL to get $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode, we're going to drop our X Factors, our game predictions for week nine. We're going to talk about why touchdowns are going to be king, and we're going to talk about these skill positions all kicking in to help the Washington Commanders combat that New York Giants pass rush, all part of the game plan for the Washington Commanders to get their seventh win of the season and to surpass the preseason six and a half win over under total. We mapped out the roadmap to get to at least seven wins, and they are so close to getting that before we even uh, get too deep into the NFL season. As we do every Friday, we're going back through our Thursday must-dos. On Crossover Thursday, in case you missed it, with Patricia Train of Locked On Giants, I identified three must-do items that the Washington Commanders have to achieve in order to secure a victory against the New York Giants. And this is, make no, no doubt about it, make no, no qualms about it. This is intended to be, if the Washington Commanders indeed do all three of these things, I am assuring you that they will win this game. Haven't been wrong yet on that. When they've gone three for three, they've won every single one of these games. But that is the intent here. So let's not let's not split hairs here. This isn't a guess. This is what I think needs to happen. Uh, and for the first one, the first thing that I think needs to happen is you got to counter that Giants pass rush, right? The, the New York Giants are not one of the heaviest uh, uh, blitzing teams in the National Football League. I know that their reputation, especially under Wink Martindale, got into like the super aggressive defense, and that is usually connected one to one to blitzing. But this New York Giants team, not as blitz happy as versions that we've seen in the past, still very aggressive, just aggressive with bringing four man rushes uh, more often than not. Since the last time uh, the Washington Commanders saw the New York Giants, they've gone up into uh, having more four down fronts, four, four down man fronts. So you used to have more two down linemen, three down linemen. Now you're getting an increase in four down linemen, still some three, not as many two, although you will see them, of course, from time to time. But basically, the New York Giants are kind of coming out. A little bit more upfront with how they're going to try to attack you and basically saying, We're just going to let our talent work and you're going to, you're not going to be able to stop it because we're that talented. And you go back to the week's comments from Commander's offensive coordinator and defense coordinator, uh, Cliff Kingsbury and Joey Jr., uh, respectively, and you hear them talk about players, not plays. And that's basically what the New York Giants are trying to do here is let's stop trying to get cued and and scheme up, you know, ways to get people open and do all this stuff. While you still obviously want to do that, let's also make sure that our best players are in the best position to make impacts on the game. That's basically what the New York Giants are trying to do. Now, the last time the Giants and the Commanders faced off, the Giants got to Jaden Daniels five times. I went back through those five sacks and broke them down uh, a little bit. Jaden kind of ran into three of those sacks. It's not to say the Giants didn't necessarily get some early pressures, but if you remember, there was the one sack, especially where he looked dead to rights, Jaden did. Uh, in the backfield, escaped, scrambled out to his left, ran around the field. Instead of getting the ball uh, out downfield or just throwing the ball away, he instead ends up taking a little bit more of another hit on the sideline, going out of bounds for a sack. So that's what we kind of talk about when he ran into some of these sacks. Uh, still, the Giants generate some of their own pressures on those, but Jaden certainly had the opportunity to get away from those. I think from week two to now, a smarter Jaden Daniels, uh, more kind of in control when he is in those scramble situations. And I wouldn't expect to maybe see as many of those in this game. Uh, one uh, featured an, out, an unchecked outside rusher against right tackle, Andrew Wiley, unchecked, meaning basically unchipped, right? He, Andrew Wiley was one-on-one -on -one with that left side defensive end. The left side defensive end beat him uh, on the outside and was able to get to Jaden. One was an inside move win against left tackle Brandon Coleman, his second career 
uh, NFL game, second week, you know, regular season week in the National Football League. And so getting a win there against Brandon Coleman on the left side. So those were the ways that the New York Giants got their five sacks against Jane Daniels. Now, later on in the season in the game against Miles Garrett, and granted, Miles Garrett is one elite pass rusher while the New York Giants have, you know, at least two in Dexter Lawrence in the middle. And then Bar- Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, certainly kind of on his way to being one of the really good pass rushers in this league. But against Miles Garrett later on in the season, you see the Washington Commanders employ a little bit more chip blocking against Miles Garrett. Not to say they didn't try to employ or didn't employ chip blocks against the New York Giants pass rush as well, but I think you saw more chip blocking against a guy like Miles Garrett, especially to help out Brandon Coleman in getting uh, that edge secured for his quarterback, for his run game, and and just kind of help out overall. So uh, I talked to Brandon Coleman after that Browns game. Again, Miles Garrett held statless. I think what they say like the third time in his career or something like that. It was basically it's very hard to keep Miles Garrett statless and. He even talked about how how great it was to have guys like Luke McCaffrey and and tight ends like John Bates. You know, even if you're not lined up in line, you're helping, you know, helping to chip block uh, and keep those defenders from getting in super quick and still getting out to be a receiver. Uh, Talk this week to Cliff Kingsbury, the commander's offensive coordinator, also took time to talk to Andrew Wiley and Luke McCaffrey about the importance of chip blocking, what it does for this offense. So let's go ahead and hear from three those three gentlemen right now. Hey, good afternoon, coach. Um, Obviously, as an office coordinator, play call, you want to stay as flexible as possible. How how valuable is it then to have so many guys that you can trust to help protect if need be or chip? You know, Austin, obviously, Lee McCaffrey, mm-hmm. John Bates, et cetera. How valuable is that for you? Yeah, it's been huge. And, and take pride in it, too. Those guys take pride in that and, and playing without the ball and making sure they're buying more time. And um, it's hard for these alignment to block those guys. They're some of the most dynamic athletes in the world playing DN and rush in this league. And so you're going to need help at some point. And we try to do that and take some off of them. And, and those guys really embrace that role. And, and a lot of times, you know, they're the ones who gets, get the ball, too, because it, it tends to be they'll chip defense will drop them or forget they were there and then they end up catching a, a check down for a positive play so it has been a, a good part of our offense and it's been been cool to see those guys really embrace it all right so that was offensive coordinator cliff kingsbury talking about the flexibility and the value and how much he appreciates these guys not only being willing but being skilled at and taking pride in chip blocking i wanted to talk to a lineman so i went ahead and talked to right tackle andrew wiley on his thoughts from being at the end of the offensive line on how valuable chip blockers can be as well so here's andrew I love it, you know, and the fact that, you know, Cliff implements that in our offense uh, regularly, um, you know, I love that fact. You know, it only helps us um, get our hands on sooner and give our guy more time, um, you know, I think. So it really helps out the guys on the edges because um, there's usually help on the inside. It's usually three block and two on the inside, uh, usually singled up on the outside. So anything extra that we can get is always much appreciated. And what does it take, like, from your aspect? Obviously, you're a blocker blocker, right? But, like, what does it take to be an effective chip blocker? Yeah, just uh, not shying away from contact. You know, I think if there's a little bit of color there, sell out, um, put something on the ribs, you know what I mean? And so I think uh, we're really good at it here. I think a lot of the young guys are really um, coming along because, uh, you know, there's a variety of people who get given those chips, um, you know, for the tackles and tight ends. And then finally, of course, let's talk to one of the guys that's chip blocking, right? Wide receiver Luke McCaffrey hasn't had the opportunity to do a whole lot in the stat box as a receiver, but believe me when I tell you, he has had quite an impact on this team. One of those ways is as a chip blocker before he gets into his release, into uh, into his into, into his routes. So here is Luke talking about his approach to being a chip blocker. Yeah, I think a lot of it is just trusting your tackle, right, and not being too too lengthy there, and being able to get out in your routes so that you can create whatever you know, whatever distribution between the routes you need. But it, it's just going in there, freaking full speed. <laughs> yeah, and I mean. Is there like another gear of like aggression that you have to get into to, to do that or uh, this come know, natural to you? I don't think you want to be out of control. And so it's just laying, laying the D end and the tackles lay and the tackles lap, right? Yeah. Just step by step. And not that you obviously, hopefully it never comes to this situation, but if you have to choose between I can secure this block or I can get in my route, yeah. which one do you, which one do you prioritize? Uh, you know, I, the way that we do it, a lot of it is, is just trying to get the tackle help. And so you're always trying to get out and, and do that but if you ever need to stay you know that's always an option all right so there's three parts of the washington commanders operation coach lineman chip blocker all talking about the importance of chip blocking kind of what it takes to be a good chip blocker and the relationship between the lineman and the chip blocker themselves and you hear kind of both those guys right andrew wiley talks about trusting that chip blocker the chip blocker talks about trusting that tackle uh you know what i mean so you see that these relationships are obviously uh symbiotic and that is our first thing 
the Washington Commanders must do. Utilize that chip block, help those tackles, help that offensive line, secure Jaden Daniels' pocket and his ability to make smart decisions down the field. But we got two more must-dos to talk about, including the fact that touchdowns are going to be king. You're going to know exactly what we're talking about. Coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're doing that thanks to our friends over at Game Time. And Game Time has a really cool feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting your tickets to your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out all of the fluff to show you only the most incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Curated deals make it easier to find the best price on those great seats. For example, my Game Time Picks right now feature tickets to see the Philadelphia Eagles facing the Washington Commanders. Yes, that game is coming up in December. But game time knows right now there are great deals on those seats, so they want to make sure that I see them as quickly as possible. And when I toggle in the all-in pricing feature on the app, I get all of the pricing numbers right up front, so there are no surprises when I hit the checkout line. Take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets, game tickets, any live event tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create your account, use the code Locked On NFL to get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create your account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N N F L. For $20 off, download game time today. What time is it? Game time. Today's episode is also brought to you by 5-Hour Energy. And our friends over at 5-Hour Energy know that being a passionate fan isn't just a hobby. It's a way of life. It takes a lot of energy to power through all-day tailgates, touchdown celebrations, or an agonizing second overtime, not in the NFL, obviously, but in other sports, which is why they've created the Stand the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot with a special flavor called Fan Fuel. The energy shop made just for super fans like you, the fans who are first in the parking lot and who are last to leave. We see you. You know what else gave a boost of Commander's fan fuel this week? That Hail Mary, man. People are still riding high off that Hail Mary, and you should, as long as you're not a player. Trust me, the players are not. But the fans, you certainly can be and certainly still are. Five Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you root for, being a fan requires heart, soul, and a whole lot of energy. Whether you're preparing for a big tailgate or ironing your jersey, your game day to-do list is always a mile long. That's why the limited edition Stand the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot is here to help you keep you fueled throughout the season. What's your fan fuel this week? Whatever it is, do it with a 5-Hour Energy available on 5hourenergy.com, shipped nationwide. Taking our second and third looks into the three must-dos for the Washington Commanders to get a win, to their seventh win uh, over the New York Giants, their second win over the New York Giants, seventh win overall. Thank you for making Locked On Commanders, your first listen of the day every day. If you want to get even more out of the program, all you got to do is become a Locked On Commanders insider. You can text me. I can text you. We're going to exchange a lot of ideas and information. You're going to have direct access to me that goes beyond the show, including exclusive invitations to our insider-only Zoom conferences. Insiders, we will not be doing a Saturday Zoom this week because I will be driving to New Jersey with my wife, so I'm going to be really busy packing you know, hanging out with the family, going to boxing with my son in the morning. Then we're going to hit the road, head to New Jersey, get some dinner, things like that. So look for our next Insider Zoom to come after the Washington Commanders' seventh win against the New York Giants. Again, second of the, against the Giants, seventh on the season. If you want to get in on, on that or anything else going on over at, with the Insider Program, go to joinsubtext.com slash Commanders. Try it out for free for the first two weeks, and then hopefully you stick around. Must do number two from our crossover Thursday episode with Patricia Trana of Locked on Giants. Find the end zone. This is a no duh, but it's a significant one to talk about because of what happened the last time these two teams met. A Washington Commanders win 21 to 18. So you love the victory. You don't love the fact that it took a record setting seven field goals from Austin Seibert in order to do it. You love that Austin Seibert was able to come through for you, uh, had more field goals made after that day than he had days employed by the team at the time. It's amazing uh, to think that that's, that's what's kind of transpired here. So you need the Washington Commanders, obviously, to find the end zone. You go back to the last week's win over the Chicago Bears. Obviously, you kind of had the same situation, right? And one of the must-dos we talked about before that game was we talked about the Washington Bears needed to score in at least three of their first four possessions against the Chicago Bears. But one of those, at least one of those, had to be a touchdown, right? Really turn the pressure up on the Bears. Really turn the pressure up on Caleb Williams and, and get him unsettled. Well. Caleb Williams came into the game unsettled. If you watched it, you can see uh, that he was definitely not, you know, calm and, 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 and composed. The Washington Commanders did, in fact, score on three of their first four drives. The problem is all three of those scores were field goals, and a 9 to nothing score is a lot different than a 13 to nothing score. 
especially when, again, you watch your opponent, if you're the Bears in this case, the commanders go into the end zone one time. So that's, that was very key to the game flow uh, of the day and a reason the Bears were able to hang around. You can't let the Giants do that. You can't get away with doing that too many times. You're playing with fire for the Washington Commanders. Uh, currently, the Washington Commanders have a 51.43% success rate in the end zone. Again, success rates in the red zone only apply to touchdowns. Field goals in the red zone are not considered successful drives in the red zone. That is 24th in the National Football League. Not good. The New York Giants, 42.11% red zone defense. That's fifth best. So you've got weakness on strength here if you're the Washington Commanders. You get inside the red zone. You're facing a defense that does not allow a lot of touchdowns in that area. You just came off from playing Chicago, who has the number one red zone defense in the NFL. You're going to face next week the Pittsburgh Steelers, who have the number two red zone defense in the NFL. So from the last three weeks, we count that last week, this week, next week. This is actually, this Giants defense is actually the, the worst red zone defense you're going to face. So that is a big challenge for the Washington Commanders. They need to try to find a way to break through that, that, that ceiling. Because, again, you get, you got to be able to get in the red zone against Pittsburgh. We'll talk about that when that time comes. Um, look, the Washington Commanders are 8 for 18. That's 44% in the red zone in the last four weeks. Since they started, 10 for 17. That includes the 0 for 6 week two, by the way, 59%. So they went 0 for 6 in one week in the first four, yet they still had a 59% red zone success rate. That would rank them 11th in the NFL, which isn't terrible. Uh, but since that week four game, so in weeks 5, 6, 7, 8 combined, the commanders are only having success in the red zone 44% of the time. So teams are definitely uh, getting better against them in the red zone. Three times this year, the New York Giants defense has kept opposing teams shut out of the end zone completely from the red zone. Week two against the commanders, week six against the Bengals, uh, week eight against the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Bengals have the fifth best red zone offense. The Steelers have the 27th best red zone offense. So we're talking about the Giants defense stopping red zone offenses that are better than or similarly ranked to the Washington Commanders, so certainly capable of doing that. The Commanders have three pass touchdowns, so that so so yeah. So what that means is, not only do you want to see the Washington Commanders get better in the red zone, obviously, but you also like to see them maybe get some scores from outside the red zone. And right now, the Commanders have three passing touchdowns from outside the red zone. That's 14th in the in the league. Two of them, not counting the Hail Mary, which would rank them 21st in the league. Uh, so they're not doing very good there either. Two rush touchdowns from outside the the red zone. Uh, ties for second most, but again, it just doesn't happen very often that you get those types of runs. Uh, the Giants, meanwhile, have five passing touchdowns allowed from outside the red zone. That's tied for fifth most. Uh, 8.1 8 .1 yards per attempt outside the red zone is 10th highest, so certainly a defense that is susceptible to doing that. All of those red zone, all those outside red zone passing touchdowns have come on a left side go or fade except for one, so four of those five passing touchdowns have come on left side fades or goes. Uh, that's Terry McLaurin's uh, specialty, guys. Um, so you want to see that. Two slot fades. One on the right side was also a slot fade. Uh, you know Jaden Daniels loves those slot fades. So uh, two rushing touchdowns allowed by the Giants defense outside the red zone, tied for second most, but again, it's still only two. Uh, 5.9 yards per carry against outside the red zone is pretty high. Uh, one, Those two rushing touchdowns they gave up both came against Cincinnati Bengals, so it's kind of a one-off more than anything. A 47-yard scramble by Joe Burrow, a 40-yard run by Chase Brown. So the key is get aggressive from the high red zone, right? The high red zone to a lot of coaches, 20 to 40 yard line on the opposite side of the field. So the plus 40 to the plus 20, get aggressive there, right? If, if you get a second and three from the 35, run that slot fade, run a deep route, right? Try to try to dial up your big hitter uh, run plays, all those things. Um, that's going to be the key, I think, to finding the end zone more while you try to work out these red zone scoring issues that have kind of crept up over the last four weeks. Uh, must do number three, contain explosive plays. Uh, a little bit, again, of a no-duh, but against the New York Giants, it's even more important. Uh, the New York Giants have the second lowest scoring production this season, but they're 11th in time of possession. That means they're having long drives that are not producing points, especially touchdowns. They're running the ball a good amount, actually. Only two rushes fewer than their opponents this season, despite scoring a full touchdown per game less than their opponents this season. 27th in the NFL, that scoring differential. So typically you expect a team that has a bad scoring differential between their opponents and them to be throwing the ball more because they're playing catch up more, right? The Raiders, for example, are one of those teams have a 178 to 227 run play difference between their opponents this season. Now, granted, the New York Giants do have Daniel Jones, who has the fifth most rushes of any quarterback in the league. So that kind of fills that gap a little bit, but not so much that they should be two rushes off from their opponents. So the New York Giants are still running the ball a good amount relative to their opponents this season. 
Uh, five scoring drives this year uh, for the New York Giants that didn't stretch at least eight plays. Those drives uh, are, are kind of important because you, it shows you that the New York Giants do not score quickly very often. So you want to make them extend those drives because that's where they're going to, honestly, they're going to make mistakes, man. Daniel Jones is going to make mistakes the longer you make those drives go or get off the field super quick. Either way, obviously, both things are kind of in the trending uh, pile for the New York Giants. So prevent those explosives. Don't give away free chicken against the New York Giants. That's going to be massive this weekend in order for the Washington Commanders to get a win. And those are our three must-dos for week nine. Coming up, we're going to make our predictions. Who's going to come out on top of this one and which player, non-quarterback player, is the most important to getting that win? That's next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And that's coming to you thanks to our guys over at FanDuel. Get ready to take the NFL action to another level with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers, you bet $5 and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if that $5 bet, bet wins. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So if you have a hunch in the middle of this game or any other game, you can go to FanDuel and you can check out the latest stats. You can give your play-by-play -play, and you can get so much more on the exact same page that you're going to then place that bet. This weekend, the Washington Commanders are coming into this game against the New York Giants as three and a half point favorites. Do you want to take that bet? If it's your first $5 bet and the Washington Commanders pull that off, you get $150 in bonus bets. And of course, you can come through the app to check the game status all throughout the game as you wish. Just visit fanduel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's fanduel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Wrapping up this Friday episode of Locked on Commanders. And we're talking about X factors. We're talking about game predictions. I'm going to share my X factor with you first. Then we'll get into the fan X factor. Then we'll get the fan prediction. And then we'll wrap this thing up. And I'll give you my score prediction uh, for this weekend. My non-quarterback X factor, defensive lineman Johnny Newton. Johnny Newton got his first sack of his career uh, against the Chicago Bears. Got his first takeaway, his first fumble recovery against the Chicago Bears. Uh, and it was big. And of course, he had to wait for it. I've got an article dropping on WSA9.com on Friday about some of the adversity that Johnny Newton has faced just to get on the NFL field, let alone get his first sack. So, of course, why wouldn't his first sack come with a little bit of drama? The NFL taking their sweet time, giving him officially that sack. But he did eventually get awarded that sack. So congratulations to Johnny Newton, of course. Uh, but Johnny Newton's going to be big in this game. One, you got to keep uh, Daniel Jones in the pocket while applying pressure. Johnny Newton has shown he's really good at doing those two things. And you got to stop this New York Giants run game. The New York Giants run game has gotten significantly better since running back Tyrone Tracy Jr. has really kind of emerged. Now, he is in concussion protocol, but he has been working his way back through. I'm going to be honest, quicker than I expected, quicker than I suspect should be uh, possible. But, you know, hey, look, that's that young man's decision. It's the team's decision. You hope that the team's got the best interest of the player at heart. It is what it is. Uh, Tyrone Tracy Jr., a lot of people are expecting him to be active. Final injury reports will come out Friday, so we'll see what that status really is uh, But before the end of the week. Um, but either way, if Tyrone Tracy is active, Johnny Newton is going to need uh, to be able to be a, a factor in stopping him up the middle, but also pursuing him on the edge and also uh, getting Daniel Jones off the spot, pushing him into edge rushers uh, who are waiting to contain or just get the sack by your stinking self, right? Um, insider non-quarterback X factor. And I had an insider come through and say, man, what a day it is that you have to specify non-quarterback because the quarterback is obviously an X factor. And I agree. It's been a lot of fun uh, covering Jane Daniels this season so far. Johnny Newton got three votes. So obviously insiders and myself, we're we're all on the same page here. Um, we also have some other votes from insiders from YouTube. Uh, Malik Neighbors, uh, whoever's defending Malik Neighbors got multiple <laughs> votes uh, from insiders and from YouTube. Uh, Benjamin St. Juice uh, getting votes. Mike St. Mikey Sainter still getting getting votes. Defensive coordinator Joe Witt Jr. Linebacker Frankie Luvu also getting votes. So obviously defense getting a lot of attention here in the X Factor conversation. But also on the offense, Brandon Coleman, left tackle, uh, getting multiple votes. Uh, Brandon Coleman, he himself also working through concussion protocol. The expectations that he will be able to play uh, and will be cleared on Friday. But again, he still has a step. Uh, to clear after missing last week's game against the Chicago Bears with that concussion that he suffered 
against the Carolina Panthers. Uh, the entire offensive line was getting some attention here. Deami Brown also uh, getting a vote, so that's really cool. So we'll see if Deami is able to make that prediction right. Austin Eckler, uh, especially if Brian Robinson Jr. is a little bit limited again. B Rob, you know, it's 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 that time of year, man, where people are banged up. So B Rob may not be able to uh, to get out there for the full scope of the game. But either way, I think the plan has always been for B Rob and Austin Eckler to be a one-two punch. Insider prediction comes through, averaged out to Washington Commanders twenty-six. New York Giants 20. However, not all insiders are on the Washington Mayors will win this train. There are multiples who are on the New York Giants are going to win this one uh, train. And look, that's why I appreciate about my insiders. Y'all keep it real. If you think that there's a possibility the Giants are going to win this game, you're going to be honest about it. And I appreciate that about you. Most of the insiders are going with the commanders, however, and the average does work out to the Washington Commanders getting a six point win covering that spread. 62% of YouTube voters are taking the commanders to win by 10 or more points. My predictions this season, I am six and two on the year straight up. I am six and two against the spread. So pretty consistent there. The Washington commanders are favored by three and a half points this weekend. The over under on total points scored is 44.5 points. Um, I am predicting the Washington commanders to score 27 points and New York giants to score 17 points. So I am predicting a 10 point win for the Washington commanders over the New York giants uh, that covers the spread. That obviously takes them head up. Uh, the total point scored 44 points, which is right on that line of 44.5. But obviously, I'm taking the under on that over under 44.5 total points scored. So those are our predictions, our X factors heading into the weekend. Next time we see each other will be after the New York Giants losing to the Washington Commanders. Seventh win of the season for the Washington Commanders. So in the meantime, if you got questions or comments, all you got to do is send them to me via text message by going to joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders, become an insider today and let me know what you're thinking out there. For your next listen, check out the Locked On NFL podcast. Find the madman, madman, Tyler Rowland, in the morning, kicking you off with a double shot of NFL espresso, then roll back through in the afternoon with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. It's the all-new Locked On NFL, and it's twice per day. As always, thank you for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day, every day, every day. Thanks for coming through on a regular basis like you do. Until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind. And I will see you right back here next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.